Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rabbi Yoel Khan from Karish and Bethel in Berkeley. I want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of our members and all of our friends and everyone who's watching this video on this Shabbat evening. We wish we could be with you in person. We believe that for everyone's health, yours and all of our communities, it's better if we keep our physical social distance. We wanted to reach out to you on this Shabbat and invite you for a few moments to join us in some Shabbat words, some Shabbat blessings, and prayers for healing. We're going to conclude our brief video this evening with the Mourner's Kaddish, remembering those members of our families and community who've died in recent days and at this season in years past, along with everyone who's been lost in this tragedy of recent days. I'm so glad to welcome on this Shabbat my colleague, Rabbi Rebecca Stern. Rabbi Stern is, as you know, on sabbatical right now, but she wanted to come back and be with us to show her caring and connect to you and to me and all of our community um, on this Shabbat. And I've asked her to join me and lead this special Shabbat video. Cantor Ilya Jenkins Abelberg sends her best regards. She's not able to be with us this evening, but is with us in spirit, as I know you are as well. Addresses angels, imagining support around us all the time, the forces that guide us and lift us to care for ourselves and to care for each other. This particular text is about sending them off on Shabbat evening as we find a new sense of safety and protection in Shabbat itself. downs of this week. I will. So we started the week with Purim. Hard to believe that that was the beginning of this week. It was a long week full of all kinds of reversals in direction and just feelings that went all over the place from hope to despair, from a sense of connection to distance. And that's the Purim story in a nutshell. It's all about turning things around just when you least expect it. You think things are gonna go one way and then they start and flip turn the other way. And so as we enter the Shabbat, we take that with us, but we also make space to pause. We make space to try to breathe, to try to find some comfort. You may have seen our other Shabbat video celebrating Shabbat Ruach with joy trying to find that place of holding the people close that we can and holding each other close from a distance, calling those people who we can't be in physical presence with 
getting into comfortable clothing, taking a nice warm shower, eating a good meal, taking care of ourselves, mind, body, and spirit. This Shabbat is an opportunity for a pause. It's an opportunity for a change in direction for us so that we have the energy once again, refreshed and restored and renewed to face whatever challenges will come next week. Shabbat is a time of welcoming joy, even though it feels like there's a shortage of joy, can we still find it on this Shabbat? Shabbat is also a time of connecting with spirit, with ruach and the shema, breath and soul. So I'll invite you to do as we did with our younger friends earlier and that we do on most Shabbat, to just take a breath. I know we're all carrying a lot of anxiety and worry, but could you take a pause from it right now and just let some of it go? Are there things that you can just let go of and table for this Shabbat? Breathe them out. And I invite you to reach out and say what you need to draw in. Even though we're not physically together, our community is together, let's draw strength and sustenance from each other. Let's reach out and draw in strength and connection from generations of our people observing this Shabbat. Let's draw in love and caring into ourselves so that we can share it with others. Please join us. God bless us with Shabbat joy. May God bless us with Shabbat peace. May God bless us with Shabbat light. And let us say, Amen. Amen. We're going to turn now to a prayer for healing. So many are in need of healing on this Shabbat. Those who are ill, those who are family and close to those who are ill, those who are in quarantine and all of us who are worried about ourselves, our loved ones, our community, our nation, and our world. Our prayer is a very old one. It's the oldest prayer that we know of from the Torah. It's from the prophet Miriam, Moses' sister. And in a moment of crisis, when Moses was suddenly struck ill, she didn't have a lot of words. She just said very simply, Elna. Rafanala, please God, please God, heal him. Elna, Rafanalanu, we ask for God's help in strengthening each of us so that we can hold space for healing for ourselves and for each other. It's simple, it's from the heart, it doesn't need to be elaborate. Our opportunities to care for one another, the ways that we reach out for one another, in this time of uncertainty, they can be very simple, stripped back to basics, just words of care and concern, a distant embrace, a way of saying, I'm here with you, even at a distance. The words are very simple. El na rafa na la. God, help us heal her. El na rafa na lo. Heal him. El na Rafana Li, oh God, please heal me. Elna Rafana Lanu, may we all be healed.
may the one who blessed our ancestors, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, bless and heal all those who are ill. We include in our Misha Birach this evening, the members of our congregation who are ill, Michael, who is recovering from a lung transplant, Jen, who is recovering from heart surgery, Marin, who is Marion, who is recovering from a stroke, and others as well who you are thinking about right now. And we ask for blessing and healing for everyone who has been infected and all who have been touched by this coronavirus and all who are ill. We ask for insight to those who bring healing, courage and faith to those who are sick, love and strength to us and all who love them. God, we ask that you let your spirit rest upon all who are ill and all who are afraid and comfort all of us. May we all know together a time of complete healing, healing of body, healing of mind, healing of spirit, healing of communities, of nations, and of our world, speedily and soon, and let us say, Amen. Amen. conclude this gathering, <clears throat> we take time to remember those whom we have lost, all those who our communities and country and world have lost in these recent days, along with our own loved ones who died this week and in this recent month, and those who died at this season in years past. We remember our loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost the martyrs of our people who lie in unmarked graves, the righteous of every nation, and all victims of violence and senseless hatred throughout the world, and all victims of this virus. We reach out with our hearts and our hands and our prayers to all who mourn. It's a fearful thing to love what death can touch, a fearful thing to love, to hope, to dream, to be, to be an O to lose, a thing for fools this, and a holy thing, a holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. To remember this brings painful joy. Tis a human thing, love, a holy thing, to love what death has touched. We announce with sadness the death of Michael Mantell, the brother of Anna Mantell. And we mourn the recent deaths of Gerald Finer, the father of Beth Zeitman and the grandfather of Ethan and Emily, of Gabriel Brill, the grandmother of Nina Wassau, and of Mildred Rogoff Siegel, the grandmother of Jen Brisk and the great grandmother of Adi, Lev, and Noah. We mourn those who've died in recent days, whose names we may know and I invite you to say them out loud now of all those around the world whose names we do not know, but hold. We lovingly call to mind those who died in years past, the anniversaries of whose passing we commemorate on this Shabbat. Harold Bear, Lucy Biggio, Libby Fisher, Dorothy Golner, Salah Houdis, Saul Jaffe, Earl Jester, Gregory Aaron Resnick, Arnold Rosenthal, Max Schwartz, Diane K. Silverman, Bertram Slanhoff, Rosalind Slanhoff, Malka Stern, Matthew David Turbo. There are others who you are thinking of who died at this season in years past 
I invite you to lift up their name now as we join their names to these that we have read now. I invite all of you, wherever you are, to join us now in the words of the Mourner's Kaddish. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabah b'alma divarach hirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol b'yit Yisrael ba'agala u'bizman kari v'imru amen. Yehe shmei rabah mvarach le'olam almei almaya. Yit barach v'yishtavach v'yit pa'ar v'yit ramam v'yit nasei. V'yit hadar, v'yit haleh, v'yit halal, shemei de kudisha, v'richu. L'eila min kol birchata v'shirata, tush birchata v'nechemata, d'amiran v'amma v'imru. Amen. Yehe shlom al-raba min shamaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. O se shalom b'imromal, hu ya se shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael I'll call Yoshevei Tevel, the Imru. Amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn, comfort all who are bereaved, here and everywhere, and let us say, Amen. Thank you for joining and spending these Shabbat moments with us. Please join us tomorrow, Saturday morning, for our live stream of Torah study and our Shabbat morning service. We'll be sending you an email early next week about other opportunities to stay connected, even as we are keeping appropriate distance from one another and for the best interest and safety of our community. I want to thank Rabbi Stern for making a special effort to be here today, coming in from her sabbatical. We're going to send you back to your sabbatical. And I uh, hope that you're able to even enjoy it and find the rest and renewal that we intended for you through these challenging times. And we send our blessings and caring to each of you. If there's specific needs or ways that you would, could, we could help you, you'd like to reach out, or we can connect you with somebody else, please reach out to us. We look forward to seeing you in person in an appropriate time soon. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.